Travis Kalanick cut all ties with Uber. The co-founder dumped his remaining chairs of Uber this week, finishing his divestment, which began when the company's lockup expired back in November. But what exactly is a lockup period and how does that work? It's time for Yahoo You! Yahoo Finance's Brian Chung is here with this week's lesson. All right, well, class is in session, and for our last lesson of 2019, we thought it would be fitting to talk about initial public offerings, or IPOs, arguably the biggest topic of the year. But more specifically, we're talking about lockups, the restrictions on when company insiders can sell their stock. And what a better way to illustrate this than with my company. So here we are, I am Chung Shoes. I manufacture some of the hottest heat on the street. But if I want to take on the biggest sneaker names in the game, then I need some money, moolah, capital. So I'm going to do a capital raise by offering shares to the public. Now, any company that goes public has to file disclosures with the Securities and Exchange Commission. And the first big document for a company going public is right here. This is the S-1. Now, buried in the S-1, you'll actually see details on what they call a lockup agreement. Now, this is something that an underwriting bank, in this case, we'll say it's called Adams Bank, is helping me configure. So in my case, I've decided that insiders cannot sell shares of the stock until 180 days after the filing of the prospectus. So what exactly constitutes insiders, though? Well, employees, directors, previous investors, and of course, corporate executives like myself. Now, what's important to note about lockup agreements is that this is not required by law. But underwriters almost always require lockups as a condition for underwriting an IPO for reasons that I'll explain later. But again, because they're not mandatory, these lockups can vary in length. So generally, they'll be, to, they'll be between 90 days and 180 days, but you can also get creative. So here's another alternate, alternative way that you can do it. So you can stagger the lockups based on who's holding the shares. So in 91 days, I can allow investors and employees who in this case hold about 200 million shares of Chung Shoes to sell their shares in the public market. But then later in six months, the uh, 60 million shares that I personally own as president, CEO, chairman, and you know, we'll just say supreme ruler of Chung Shoes will then also be eligible to be sold into the public market. Now, this tiered system was actually used by Facebook when it went public a few years ago. So their IPO actually had five lockup dates ranging from three months to a full year that gradually allowed shares to be sold. So the golden question in this case, though, is then why have a lockup at all? Well, the first reason is to reduce volatility in the stock price. So think about what would happen on day one of the Chung Shoes IPO if all of the insiders just dumped their shares at once. Well, basic supply and demand would imply that the stock price would sharply drop. And that's because flooding the market with a more supply of shares would reduce each share's value. The second reason, though, is to maintain confidence in the company. So as the owner of Chung Shoes, I'd like to think that my original investors, fellow board members, and C-suite colleagues would actually want to hold on to shares as we navigate the company to the public market. Now, if they sell their shares, that may mean that they see a little upside to the stock, which is a bad message to serve as someone that's close to the company itself. And again, barring them from selling shares, at least through the first few months of a stock being public, should prevent erosion of company trust. And lastly, there's preserving the reputation of the underwriters. So Adams Bank, in this case, doesn't want egg on his face if the IPO resulted in a bunch of insiders dumping their shares and crashing the price on day one. So by stabilizing the stock price through lockups, the underwriter actually hopes that other companies in the wings looking to go public will consider it and Adams Bank for its IPO. Now, there's also reputational risk, though. So many IPOs actually give underwriters the discretion to exempt some insiders from a lockup period, which some critics have blasted as unfair. But keep in mind that that's actually legal. So, Adam, no funny business here, because <laughs> that means you might not get the next big IPO. But again, guys, the question as we head into 2020 is going to be whether or not we might see another bizarre situation like, Adam, like well, with Travis Kalanick, where we actually had an insider who then left the company, got ousted, and then ended up dumping his shares. So something to watch. Do you think that sense, though, in, in the case of Kalanick, let me just ask you both, does that send a negative message? Because he did get ousted for reasons which were oustable. I mean, he was caught on video. For, I don't know if oustable is a word, but you right. get where I'm going. Well, yeah, I mean, there was sexual harassment and yes. a really terrible culture over at Uber. So people actually were probably encouraged by the fact that he didn't have a say in the company anymore, which is why maybe you didn't see it slip through. But I think also the fact that he is dumping his entire stake, the fact that that is now available, I think that does raise some questions out there in the street just in in terms of the confidence that people should have in Uber right now in terms of its direction. There's still a lot of unanswered questions, I think, there. So I think it does raise a red flag. 
him being ousted, though, from the company just in terms of CEO. I think that, that kind of alleviates some of those fears, but I do think it is a little bit present, at least at this point. Hey, investors, Zach Guzman here. Are you interested in learning more about the markets and getting the latest financial news? Well, then click right here to subscribe to our Yahoo Finance YouTube channel. Get the latest up-to-the-minute market analysis, big interviews in the world of finance, and information on how to manage your money every day, wherever you are.